you know, and, uh, and uh, open in Italy. So it was very exciting, by the way. I spent 40 days in Italy during the lockdown with the COVID. <laughs> Guess what? I still did all my appointments, and I went. Yeah, they closed down some hotels where I, I was supposed to stay, and I had to figure out things on the spot. But, you know, it's part of the adventure, right? It's fun. It's fun. So, you know, I have to be a little bit creative. But so that's, is it that another international opportunity? It is. We have the opportunity also to expand our network to different countries. I have agents in Mexico. I have agents in South Africa. I have agents in India, in, in France, in Spain, Italy, obviously. Here in the United States, a few. So, you know, we can, we can work internationally. Plus, when you want to work internationally, what is it that EXP gives you also? It gives you a network of 70,000 agents around the world. Don't underestimate that. There are different groups that work in different uh, uh, sectors, and, and they open on purpose for different uh, topics. If you go uh, in Facebook work for EXP, you will see, you start researching, Say that you want to do commercial real estate, or you want to do international business, or international real estate, or referral, or whatever. You find those groups. I know I created a couple myself, so I know they're there. Okay? Why? But why did I create it? Because I got people that has my same mentality. I put them together in that group, and we exchange information. Not only about properties, assets. Also, how to procedures, how to do things. How can we get better? So that's, uh, guess what? I've been doing it, but I'm still learning myself, right? Everybody here, I don't care how experienced they are, they're still learning. Now, there are different stages of learning. Of course, there is some that are just at the beginning, some are a little bit more advanced. But I get something new every day, I learn something new. And that's what it's about, be open to learn, okay? So, uh, creating an international brand. As you notice, I created several brands, right, already. I have three brands that are international right now. And it took me a little bit of time. I started with one, then I went with a second one. The key of how I did this is I got partners. I can't do everything by myself, can I? Yeah, I'm good, but I'm not that good, all right? So <laughs> uh, I need the help. So example, with the uh, beach homes investments, as I told you before, I called Bobby and, and Diante, but why? Because I needed their skills, right? And they needed my skills. So if we put them together, we were a, a winning situation. I don't care I have to share being free, free people, because I'm obtaining something that I could have never obtain by myself. So having Bobby, that obviously he's a very good presenter, much better than me, <laughs> and, and, and a good speaker, you know. Having Diante, that is excited, he knows how to do videos, he brings, he, he, he has people that follow him because of his, uh, uh, how you say, uh, way of being, you know. Uh, I mean, it's all, we went together, we had a lot of fun, you know, in, in the military part. I don't know if you saw some of the videos there. They also challenged me to go over the gate. Of course, I won. But, you know, challenge always accepted. <laughs> they were thinking because I'm 60 years old, I couldn't do it. Uh, I, I, I showed them wrong. But these kids, you know, today. But anyway, uh, the thing is, I needed their skills. They needed mine to be able to do this, right? So we did it. And right now, it's going very, very well. Now, um, all agents obviously can register in Beach Home if you want to register, and you can sell properties, and you get 5% commission. It's no brainer. I will be in Dominican Republic next week. So just let me know, okay? Because you can promote them. Uh, I know that Diante is doing the marketing, he's sending out videos and things like this, so you just have to register and so on. Now, for the one that I'm doing with, for the hotels, uh, BT Global Group, okay? Uh, that company is very, very new. I started very recently, and I have a young lady that is, she asked me to mentor her, okay, she's from Atlanta, she asked me to mentor her, why? Because 
she wanted to get into this business of the hotels. And at the same time, talking to her, because we always ask the right questions, right? Talking to her, her family has quite a few hotels in India. And I said, listen, instead of mentoring you, why don't we become partners? And we do this together. When we're selling the hotels of your, uh, you know, of your family, uh, 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 then at that point, you'll be learning and you'll be actually taking over, you know? So, because I want her to become a manager then, uh, running this, of course, you know, and take away a little bit of my responsibility. And, and, but I couldn't do it by myself. Well, I, I, really, I really could have, but it's so much work. It is so much work. Just creating a database and maintaining a database of $60 billion assets, it's a lot of work. She's young, she has the energy, right? I'm 60, guys. I'll tell you honestly, I'm 60 years old. Slowing down a little bit, you know? Can you tell? <laughs> so, <laughs> but that's the thing. You have to partner with key people. People that you know that you need them as much as they need you. That they do have an interest, a genuine interest, and you can create this. You can create a base by yourself, obviously. But if you want to improve, you want to go forward, and you need help, accept that, right? Now, if you guys come up with an idea, I want to do this international, that I haven't done yet, we partner up. Maybe I have the experience and the connections. Who knows, right? I never say no, okay? And then, so international brand, I already have three brands that people know. I have, you know, quite a few followers on them. And, and then there are many, many, many more opportunities that you can see. This is what I'm doing. It doesn't mean that you have to do exactly what I'm doing. You might have a different niche. You might have a different opportunity. You might have a different calling, okay? Take advantage of that. Don't say, oh, I can't do this. There's always people here to help you. There's people with different experiences. If you want to do commercial, there's Mackenzie. She's very, very good doing commercial. She's awesome. She's fantastic, okay? And, and uh, uh, you know, and being so young, sometimes she says something, I say, well, I didn't know that, you know? And I've been doing it for a long time. So, as I said, you never stop learning. And, and be open to opportunities, whatever you want to do. To me, residential real estate for me is a little tight. But it's me, eh? I don't, say, I don't, I don't want to say that it's bad or anything like that, absolutely not. Don't misunderstand. For me, Having to show a house and the lady doesn't like the house because the wall is green, you know, I can't, I can't stand that anymore. You know, it's, it's for me, I passed that stage already. I can't. Uh, 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 <laughs> maybe I'm too old for it, but, you know, uh, uh, it's, it's not me anymore. Okay? So, how do you get to be worldwide? How do you get to get worldwide? Anybody has an answer on that? Find a partner. Find a partner? Connections. Yeah. Uh, no, it's not about partner. It's, it's, but it's correct. It is about connections, right? Networking. You, eh? networking. networking. Of course. Of course it's networking. So uh, 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 you have to be uh, a known. Right now, I'm known. And, and I'll show you why and how I work it too. Okay? So, being international, uh, uh, how to go to be worldwide is, first of all, don't have fear. Many people have fear, right? Oh, I don't speak Japanese. Guess what? I have hotels in Japan. I don't speak Japanese. I don't care. I have hotels in the Maldives. I don't, I don't even know what language to speak there, but I don't, I don't speak it. You know? Or, or in Thailand. Or right now, uh, as I told you, this morning I was having a video conference with Kazakhstan, some, some place like that I cannot even pronounce, you know. And, and, and we're getting some hotels in Russia and uh, in, in the east side of Europe. So, I mean, you never know what's coming, and language shouldn't be a barrier. I, ha I do have to admit I have a little advantage because I speak four languages, okay? But I don't speak all the languages of the world. So if I speak uh, uh, English, normally I get by, right? 
Italian, there is an Italian everywhere. You go in Sahara Desert, you find an Italian. So it's <laughs> everywhere there is an Italian. You know? But the second great, uh, uh, largest population where is the Spanish, right? After, uh, maybe Chinese and then Spanish, but it's, uh, it's OK. But anyway, so uh, with Spanish also, you get another large chunk of people, and, and, and so on and on. Then there is the French, but you know, French is French, uh, when you work in France. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but um, don't tell anything to my Eva, eh? she will beat me up, all right? <laughs> But no, I, I'm just joking, really. No, uh, it's not about languages that you speak, because I'm in many countries that I don't speak the language, OK? And, and so that should not be an obstacle. I have, if you need, when I have to write and somebody doesn't understand English, I use a program that is called Deep, it's D-E-E-P-L, Deep L. I don't use Google. Google is very incorrect. This program is much better when you have to translate. And it's free. Deep L. Is that an app or is it also the like, uh, part of the internet? Uh, it also has an app. Kind of yeah. Deep L. It's D-E-E-P-L. The letter L. OK? And that's what I use when I have to communicate internationally and I don't know the language. It makes it very, very simple. Copy, paste, pump, translate to this language. It does it automatically. And you don't have to worry about it. OK? Which are the best tools? How do you get to an internet? We, we agreed before, right? That to grow internationally, globally, you have to have a global network. How do you create that? Any ideas? Eh? But friends, but you, if you were born in Florida, you grew up in Florida, how do you have so many international friends? You just start conversations and Show you. Social media, especially LinkedIn. <laughs> this is my LinkedIn, which is not up to date. It's about, about 1,000 followers short, this one, because it's an old one. I think it's of last month. I have about 1,000 followers a month coming on. What that means? How does that translate? They know me. They like my profile. They start seeing, oh man, here there is something to do. Right? So I'm getting those 1,000 connections a month. Or maybe 45 days. Okay? And it's not an exact science, but you understand the, the, the concept of what it means. Now, obviously, I, if you look at my Facebook, you look at my Instagram and stuff like that, yeah, I show, I show a picture when I'm at the beach with my wife or my kids on there, to be honest. But I don't do business there. I don't see it as a business platform. This is business to business. You want to do business? With other agent, this is the network to use. LinkedIn. LinkedIn. You first thing you should do is fix your profile. Fix your profile. If you want, you can go and look at mine. Okay. You should put everything that you study, everything that you study, everything that you did as a no profit, uh, ev everything. <coughs> I also been for years a soccer coach. Example is there. Because you can relate with different people, right? Mm -hmm. So let's say I've been a soccer coach for 30 years. If you're talking to Europe or South America, what do you think we're talking about, first thing? Soccer! soccer. Football. Actually, it's football, yeah. right? The real football. Yeah. But so that's well, because, like everything, and I learned this because I used to be director of sales for a cluster of hotels, too. That's why I know about hotels also, not only because I, I make conventions, but also because I worked in them. And uh, uh, the one thing, I did the course for the Hiltons, and that's something that they taught me that I never forgot. When you meet a person, the first thing that you do, if you go in their office or in their house, you look around, and you see what you have in common. You see a picture of the kid with a soccer ball? Oh, cool. How old is your son? That's the first thing. And then soccer, obviously, right? 
So, uh, or baseball, or whatever it is. Uh, I mean, it can be fishing, it can be anything, anything. And, and normally they keep pictures of those things, and if you ask, or oh, going back to asking questions, that is what, how I started this business, right? And if you write, ask the right questions, you will know what are their interests, what they like to do, what do you have in common, and based on that, you build a relationship. Are we salespeople? Yeah. No. no. We're not salespeople. We are not sell. We, as I repeat, we have nothing to sell. All that you saw before, it's not mine to sell. Somebody else is the owner. I'm providing a service. They can be consulting, they can be a real estate agent, they can be whatever. So what is it that I need to do with the buyers or the sellers? Build a relationship. Not, no matter if it's local or international, there, that is always the same point. It's always the same. You have to build a relationship with them, right? You have to have, I spoke a lady that now, I will show you later, she, 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 she just uh, uh, sent me a WhatsApp yesterday. She asked me for eight hotels, and you know why? Because she's British, and guess what? My mom is British, and she sounded exactly like my mom, which passed away two, day, two years ago. I told her, you know what, no matter what, I will never cheat you because you are my mom now, you know? She sounded exactly like my mom, and, and she loved that, obviously, right? So, and, and I was sincere, by the way. You can tell when somebody is sincere and when it's not, right? You, you, you have the sixth sense that tells you. So, mine was very, very sincere, obviously, and she loved that. She sent me yesterday eight hotels to buy. Are we talking a billion free in hotels? Call it with the B, not with the M. With the B, one billion point three hundred million to buy. What was that? But you understand how a relationship, something that you say can create this. Does it matter that it's local or international? No, it does not. But this is my instrument. So right now I have about 14,500. So as I told you, this is short of 1,000. I will say that, uh, you see, I, I put it, everything that I do. So I'm CEO of a Global Alliance Group, right? I'm partner, because I do have a partner, in BT Global Commercial, which is the, where, the, where I have $60 billion in assets. I am a partner and master broker at Beach Home Investment. Is what I showed you earlier. I have it listed there. Then obviously if you go down, there is a lot, a lot more stuff. There is articles, there is videos, there is stuff, uh, you know, all these things. It, it, it lists when I went to school, it lists what I graduated in. By the way, I graduated in hotel management. That gives me a little advantage working in a certain sector, right? But it doesn't have to be that sector. You can work on land only. Pieces of land to be developed. Uh, I, I, I received a call, it was a couple days ago, for somebody doing in Dominican Republic a $1 billion development. They said, Biagio, can you help me? Sure, that's my commission. <laughs> I, just, I never asked that, by the way. I never asked what was my commission at the beginning. It doesn't matter. The commission will come, the money will come. Do what you like to do. Enjoy what you like to do. Find your niche. It can be warehouses. It can be buildings. Uh, you know, uh, I, I do also those. I don't have only hotels, mines, and I have also entire buildings, like, uh, let's say, the Trump building. You know, there's one in Vancouver, for example, for sale, uh, and stuff like that. So it's what we consider assets, all right? And find what you like to do Get into it. If you need my help, I will help you. I promise. You know, uh, and 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 uh, let me know. You know, how do I do this? I have this idea. Why not? I won't steal your idea. I promise you. I won't steal your idea. I have enough on my plate too, right now. Okay. I, I, even if I want, I can't. <laughs> so don't have to worry about that. And that brings us down also to another thing. 
that you should always do when you, if you work in this is always do an NDA. That's the minimum you should do. But what I do, I have my attorneys draw up an NC NDA. What's the difference? What's an NDA? Perfect. No disclosure. An NC NDA. Uh, no. Well, the NDA, technically, yes, is that. Unless, you know, obviously, we have to send it to our clients, so that's limited. But the NC part is non-circumvention. Non-circumvention, non-disclosure agreement. And that's very important when you work in commercial, especially you work at high-end assets. Non-circumvention. And I do it with the... Uh, 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 the International Trade Commission that is linked to the International Trade Commission, so our, our reports directly to them if they do. Okay? Which is, which is based in France, by the way. Can you let me know what is NDA? NDA, Non Disclosure Agreement. And if you put, and uh, what I use is NC, <laughs> that is Non Circumvention non-disclosure agreement, okay? Which is a little bit more complete. It's four pages long, but it protects you a little bit better. So what is exactly does it protect more business than NDA? Well, the NDA, it doesn't have the non-circumvention part, right? At least not as detailed. It has very, very generic uh, 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 mentioning of it. This is very specific. This has been done by our attorneys to, to do it in a, in a way that, I mean, you go around me, I shut you down. <coughs> You're in trouble, really. So, but this is the tool I use. Another tool I use, and let me get out one. Uh, let me see how I do this again. Uh, another tool that I use a lot. What happened? Okay. Another tool that I use a lot is this. Okay, so to give you an example, this is uh, my WhatsApp, okay? And this is where I have all different groups of stuff. So uh, this, I had some meetings already this morning, and this is to show you what I came in just yesterday. Two in Spain, two in Miami, two in California, Ritz in France, that is $800 million. Okay, and Kuala Lumpur. This is just one request that came in yesterday. Yesterday I have three requests in total. You see how these numbers can add up pretty good? Those are requests that people are looking for. Yep. Yeah, and I have the assets for it. So now I just have to do NCNDAs. Once they sign the NCNDAs, I will send them the, the product. So, you know, this uh, is just to give you an idea of uh, a few properties that uh, uh, we're working on, on, uh, on a, uh, that we're working on. Obviously, there were other names there. That's why I took it down, because obviously there is confidentiality in many of these assets. They cannot be disclosed and, 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 and sent around. But I'll tell you what, I, I have one in New York that is a billion dollars. I have one in Sydney that is a billion dollars. And they were for that. There is a, 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 a difference in between your buyers, what they're looking for. You know how in local real estate here, what you have? You have the one that, as investors, I'm sorry, uh, what they have? They have the short term and the long term investors, right? So in, in this, in commercial, it's the same. And, and also in anything that you do, uh, anything that you do is the same thing. Uh, uh, you always have the different, the different uh, type of investors, right? So even when I'm working in the Caribbean, you want that one that has the property already done, they're paying a premium for it. Or the one that's going to be a weight that it builds, so they do 50% uh, 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 gain as equity, and then they make the 7% monthly 
on, on uh, a yearly, I'm sorry, they make the 7% gain, right, on, on, on the rental of the apartment. So there are two different types of investors. This is the same thing when you work in this. There is the one that is looking for a trophy asset. When you're looking for a trophy asset, what does it mean? It means you're looking for a particular asset that has a name. Okay? Let's put an example. The hotel where Lady Diana left before uh, having the accident. Let's call it like that. Okay? That, has, that hotel has an extremely high value. It will never make their money. Somebody that buys it will never make the money that they spent on the, the, the keys, rent, at least, uh, uh, renting the keys. Keys is, means rooms, OK? So you, doing the keys, you will never get that money. But when you resell it five, six, seven years from now, you will make 30, 50, a million, $100 million on it as a game. That's one type of investment. Then there is the other type of investor that is looking for a return on the keys. So it has to have a certain ref par. Ref par is, is another thing that, you know, the, the, the uh, uh, ADR, the, the actual cost of a room per night divided by the, 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 the number of rooms, okay? And, uh, you know, that's also how you can calculate for this, is they want to have a certain return from the keys. Obviously, there are no hotels as important as that. There might be three, four stars. There are some five stars also that have a certain return. Another thing is you have to learn how to do projections. Why? Because obviously, the hotels, the last performance they have is from 2019. So 2020 and 2021, they didn't, haven't been working that much. And they're actually in debt, many of them, right? So you have to do a projection of what it will be in 2023 when they reopen. Or, you know, for when they reopen, or what will be their, their, their uh, gain. So, I mean, there is a lot of math involved with it too. I hope you like math, okay? So, <laughs> uh, let's see here how this works again. Uh, going in and out, there's no easy thing under this thing, eh? I tell you. So let's go to the next. EXP helps you with workplace international groups, as I was mentioning before. Okay. You have EXP Globals. You have EXP Countries Referral Programs. You have EXP Commercial International. EXP Global Marketing. EXP, EXP International Investment. EXP Exclusive Listing, and many others. I know I have one that is uh, uh, EXP Global Off-Market Assets. That, that's mine. I created that, as I told you, and I have certain particular individuals in that that, you know, they participate in this. So there are many, many EXP actually helps you to work your international if you really want to go international. And I think if you're here today, that's your goal, right? At least you want to have a little bit of understanding. And that's why I'm giving you some details of what I'm doing so that you, ha you can have a little base. Okay, then as I told you later on, we will do another class that will be a little bit deeper on, on how and the procedures and all this. Right now, I'm just doing a generic thing. Sounds good? Do you need special attributes? With attributes, maybe I, I, I wrote it wrong. You know, my English is not my first language, so sometimes I, I write strange stuff. But what I mean is, do you need skills, actually? Do you need special skills, not attributes, skills? OK, I translate that. Uh, do you think that you need, do I have special skills? Am I smarter than you? Thank you. <laughs> that was a fast answer. <laughs> no, true, it's not. I'm, not. I'm not smarter than you guys. I'm not. I just have a different background. I just worked in a different way, OK? Uh, maybe I'm a little bit more, because I, I worked international, I traveled the world, I lived in different countries and different continents, I have a little bit more open mind, okay, to, to receive and, and, and to understand things. And, and, but it, it can be accomplished very, very well. Uh, yes, uh, you don't need to have special skills to do this. You just need to have the will, a little imagination, 
creativity and a lot of uh, um, uh, will to work. To be honest, because it is work. It doesn't come easy. I wake up at 4 o'clock. This morning at 4 o'clock I was working. Why? Time difference, right? So obviously my wife is still sleeping at that time. I cannot do the phone calls until 7 o'clock <laughs> when she wakes up. But in the meantime, I do all the emails, the answers, and things like this. Right? Then first thing in the morning, after I do my exercise and everything, I have a meeting with my partner, with the BD Global Group, right? Because we have to do, see what happened yesterday and what happens today. It's that to keep in communication and everything, we use a program that is uh, very, very good, and we can share everything, and we can see what everybody's doing. That's called Monday.com. I don't know if you've never heard of that. Monday.com, if you work in a team and you work in producing uh, with other people, it's an awesome, awesome platform. Because you can set up all your marketing, you can set up all your clients, you can set up all your providers, you can set up everything there and have updates, communication, it, it, it gets your emails automatically that they send, and all that. If you're working with somebody else, I suggest, I suggest strongly that you look into it. Plus, it's very, very cheap, too. I don't like to spend money for nothing, right? Yeah. So it's, it's also very cheap. And, but as I said, it needs work. Somebody has to work it. So do we need skills, particular skills to do this? No. I'm a normal human being. I'm not a genius. I'm not anything particular, OK? I just have a little bit different background from you guys. But you can get exactly to the same point without much effort, to be honest, just with the will to do it, all right? And, and I'm always here to help if you need. Why international business is important? And this will go over some of the points that we already touched, right? It will open your mind to bigger things. You will change, it will change your way of thinking. And you have to change your way of thinking. The guy from Singapore that sent me his passport, he was legit. But an American will never send his passport. You cannot think only American. Or you can only think Italian. Or you cannot think only one way. You have to be open. So it will change your way of thinking. It will also improve on you on a cultural level. You will start understand different cultures. I don't mean as a cultural level as, as study, OK? I mean uh, uh, and, uh, as, as understanding other cultures, understanding. Because at the end, what are you? You are an ambassador. You are a, a, a somebody that is in between that has to make understand a European and an Australian how to work together. Because they have two different ways of doing it. That's what you, you become when you are doing at this level. Obviously, in Dominican Republic, the other company I have in Dominican Republic, when I master broker, that's a little bit more simple, right? So there are different levels of doing it, and different levels, like I have the Global Alliance Group, that's completely different, too. It's pretty easy. They want me to market the properties. They send me the property. I market them. So very simple. As I told you, I just got yesterday two from Mexico. I repeat, somebody wants to buy properties in Mexico? They produce lemon? No, lemon is very expensive right now. <laughs> but, uh, but anyway, so opportunities are always there. Global Alliance Group. Uh, uh, um, and some things that I, I honestly I like to, to, to do myself, you know, like when the, when the uh, COVID hit, you know, that's when I started Global Alliance Group to create a, a, my own MLS. I went on the internet, how do you do a website, how do you do this and that, and I created my own with WordPress. I had nothing to do during the, the, the COVID, at the beginning when there was a the lockdown, there wasn't much to do, right? Everybody was in panic, everything stopped. I can't stay without doing anything, so I created my own thing, and guess what? <laughs> it worked out, right? So um, it will make you more open to realize opportunities that present themselves, that, that presents themselves. Like we spoke at the beginning, my client, that's where everything started. 
right? From one client talking to me about something. That's where it started. It will grow your network. I have almost 15,000, another 500, and next month I will be at 15,000 people following me. And that's just on LinkedIn. You know what importance has 15, if I post something and I have 15 people, 15,000 people around the world seeing it, you know what power is that? Right? I don't know how many you have on Facebook, but I think after two, three thousand, you, you, they stop you. You can't put it anymore. Oh, oh, five thousand. Five thousand? Yeah. So here I have fifteen thousand, almost fifteen thousand, and it's still growing. And it's still growing naturally. It's growing naturally with people that has funds, people that has uh, holdings, people that has <coughs> that want to invest. People that has hotels and want to propose them, that, that we market for them. I, I mean, it's always, always, always something. Every morning, between, uh, uh, um, between WhatsApp, LinkedIn, and emails, I have a minimum, minimum 150. Every morning when I wake up. Messages. Okay? So that's why I need a partner. I can't do everything by myself, right? So what we did, we, we, we divide and conquer. So my partner, her duties is more about keeping up with the assets, keeping up you know, the, the list, uh, doing the NCNDAs and things like this. I, I am the first contact for the buyers, okay? And, and from there, then we, we develop the, the buyers uh, going forward, okay? Uh, uh, and, and but the roles now start changing because we catched up with the, we said we're going to suspend. Even though they send us most assets right now, we're not going to post them. I, want, I need your help with buyers. Because I have so many buyers that want to buy assets that I started having a challenge and having inventory, adding inventory after you have $60 billion of inventory, it doesn't matter anymore, right? You already created that image. Now is who we have to take care is the multiple buyers that are coming along. So you also have to be able to shift and, and change your routines and what it needs based on what is the, the situation right now. And that's why you need a, 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 the flexibility, the mental flexibility to do that. You can't be stuck with one uh, uh, thing. I, 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 I teach you an anecdote, and what I learned is, I, I told you I've been a soccer coach. First of all, I've been a soccer player, right? I played professionally in Europe, and then I, I was a soccer coach here for kids for 30 years. I was able to work, and go. we won several state championships and things like this, so uh, uh, we did very well. I have kids that play in, in, in Spain. I have kids that play in different parts of the world, and so on, all right? So, but the thing is, I learned that you cannot, when you're playing, and I'm sorry to relate this to soccer, I know you, most of you guys are, are football, American football players, but I don't understand that game. So I understand soccer. I cannot use the same tactics against every adversary. I cannot say I go with a formation 4-4-2 with everybody. So what I do, I, I create a different system from everybody. I did a four in the back in defense. I did a diamond in the middle, so four players at the diamond and two on the top. So I have two to score, four to defend. In the middle, I can change those to a 4-5-1. I can change that to a 4-4-2, a 4-3-3, just with a senior. Because they're already in diamond shape, it depends only which players come up or down in the middle. And that changes the whole formation depending on what the other team is doing. You understand? And and this I apply also in, in work. We have to be able to adapt. We have to be able to change. Okay? And that it, was, it creates your, your uh, 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 flexibility, your mind flexibility. Okay? Your presence in the market will be exponential growing. That's what's happening to me. I'm not looking for more, but it's coming more because I already created a, net, a, a name. And to be honest, it's not that difficult. You just have to show that you know the product that you're doing, right? 
So learn the products, what you want to do. What is, what is going to be your niche? You want to sell land for development? Right now, we, I'm in a project of $1 billion in, a, in, a, in DR. They're buying an island and developing a, a very high-end hotel luxury. Right now, there is nothing. They are also have to build a little city around it. They have to put a water depurator. They have to put all the stuff. It's a billion dollar project. Okay? I get 1%. Is that enough? Yeah. I can live a couple months with that. <laughs> right? So, and I didn't ask. They offered. That's the beauty of it. I don't ask how much is the commission. Normally, they offer. I can give you this and this and that. If they don't, at a certain point, you know, we will do a commission agreement, okay? Because it always has to be everything in paper. So uh, what I normally do that we agree with my partner, if it's up to 150 million, it's 3%. Uh, 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 150 to, to, the, uh, to the billion dollar is 2%. The billion dollar and up is 1%. Start calculating the numbers. Have you seen the request that I got yesterday? One billion four in everything, but they're not all one asset, right? So those are a lot of them are two or three percent. How that sh how much that makes? You start playing the numbers, and I told you before, a guy from our office, even for for the uh, uh, the one in DR, he sold ten units because he wanted somebody that has. That, that want, want to buy with crypto. We can sell with crypto. Cryptocurrency. And that's why we sold 10 euros. Here in the States, it's difficult to sell with crypto. Right? So we gave them the opportunity. Your presence in the market with exponential growing, okay, your reputation will grow. It's a consequence of the, uh, the one above, right? So, uh, I mean... What does it mean on market, off market? On market, it's not like it's listed for everyone to see. Correct. Um, on market, yes, you find it on Craxy, on LoopNet, and so on and on, right? Uh, off market is more like a pocket listing? Uh, yes, actually, you are correct. Uh, uh, off market is, let, let me give you an example. Let's say that you have a, a very, very high end hotel, right? and of, of a big chain, and they, it's their star hotel. And you tell them that you say it in the open market that that hotel is for sale. What happened to the stocks of that company? They go down, right? That's why we come in. We have a set network of uh, investors and buyers, and that's why everything that you saw, those $60 billion of properties, they're all off market. We. We don't sell unless somebody didn't tell us that they actually put it on market, but normally we do not sell on market. I'm not interested in that. There's plenty of people who do that. I have my niche. I create my niche. My niche is the off market for BT Global Group. Obviously, the, the, one, the, 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 the beach homes investments, that is on market, right? We are proposing that on a regular market and, 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 uh, uh, and so on. But, uh, yes, sir? So, um, for the off market, off market versus on market, is there a dollar threshold that you're working with? Um, uh, yeah, that's a very good. Because that, it sounds like you're working with several hundred million dollars in maybe an asset, one asset. I'm an investor, I don't want to put it out there to the world and get a bunch of garbage. In fact, that's why we do NCNDAs. Yeah. It's yeah. actually many of the properties we close, we cannot disclose. Yeah. I cannot say, hey, I sold a billion dollar hotel. I can't do that. Yeah. I have to be a shush. They don't want to know, they don't want people to know that they change ownership. Yeah, in the <coughs> exactly. First of all, the employees, of course. Yeah. Second of all, the stocks of the company. Right? One might go down, one might go up. So you don't want to interfere with that. So everything is very ashush. It can't be disclosed. But talk, uh, answering your question directly is when it's off market, is it for sale? 
No, it's not. If you call them and you ask, let's say I have the, I don't know, the, the four season in New York and I have it for sale, okay? 800 million, hypothetically, yeah? Okay? And I have it for sale and I know who can buy it and I, have, I can make a contract and I have LOIs and stuff like that. But if you call them directly, what they will answer to you? You call the general manager, what do they say? It's not for sale, never been for sale. It's off market. It's never going to be publicized. Where, I, where do I get the assets? From the attorneys that deal with these things. I have attorneys in France, I have attorneys in Italy, I have attorneys in Germany, in the in United States, uh, and are all over. Most of them are deal by, dealt by uh, attorneys. Okay? In some countries, like in India, they have to go through a real estate agent there. But what we ask is to have direct contact with the buyer, with the seller, I'm sorry. Right? As I told you before, each country is different how they handle things. All right? Especially when you're talking about these kind of assets. So you really have to understand the concept of off-market first. First of all, it's never for sale. The property is not for sale. If they're selling it, they're selling at a higher price of what is actually market value. If it's off market, normally, okay? Uh, and just put it on the contract, a portfolio of free hotels on one block in Rome, in Italy. The family didn't want to sell until now. Now they changed their mind, they want to sell. But they don't want nobody to know. So until I better the buyer, that I know that I have his, his profile, and I have his, uh, uh, um, uh, how you call it, the, the POF, proof of funds, I will not introduce him to the hotel. I can't. The attorney will kill me if I do. You understand? Because then it starts spreading the word around. So I have to make sure who I'm talking to. And that's why it makes it very difficult because at the same time, let's say that it's not my direct buyer. Do you want me to know who your buyer is? No. And that's why it's all a game. It's like a chess game, you know? You have to give a little bit and take a little bit and, and, and things like that. So that's why it's very complicated, you know? But it can be done. I promise you that it can be done, all right? So there is a huge difference between on-market and off-market. If you see my list that I showed you before on BT Global Group, the one I showed you about the, 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 all the hotels in Asia and, and Europe, you see that there is not a name of the hotel there. There is not a name. There is only a description and a general area where it is because I cannot put a name to it until I have all the proper documentation set up, okay? So that's the big difference on market and off market. Uh, a lot of people, they ask you what's the yield, what's the noise, what's the, you know, uh, the, 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 the cap on these hotels. Can't have it, not until you commit it. When you commit it, I give you everything. I, I, I open the data vault, but until then, you do not get anything, nothing. You know, I just had this problem, a guy, I'm selling a $6 billion uh, uh, group of hotels, okay, here in the States. And I have one buyer that want to have all the information and not give anything about his, about his buyer. Bye-bye, can't do, can't work. I didn't even know that your buyer can buy $6 billion. Right? So, if not, there's no point going on with the conversation. It's fine. There is always another buyer. <laughs> Do you want your commission? Yes. <laughs> As I said, I never approach any deal with a commission. Never. But the commission always comes. If you start a conversation, oh, how much is my commission? But don't you want to know a little bit about this and that before? So, uh, what, normally what I do is when I get an LOI, letter of intent, okay, uh, a letter of intent, then at that point, we start work before delivering it to the seller, at that point, we start working on 
how we do the commission. In most of these transactions, it's the buyer that pays. Isn't always the buyer that pays? Why not? Tell me why not. It's always the buyer that pays. No matter what. You think that the seller here is paying? So if the if seller say, gives you a 3% commission, don't you think that if the buyer was paying it, you could get the, you could get the property for 3% less? So it's the buyer paying anyway. Always is the buyer paying. No matter what they make you believe, it's always the buyer paying the commission. If you analyze it and you break it down, it's always like that. How many of you knew that? Yeah. Always the buyer is paying. And sometimes you just have to make it understand to your, to your buyer. You know, because they have, like you, they were used to, oh, the seller pays a commission. Yeah, of, of course, the seller pays commission, but it's charging you 3% more on the value of the house. If not, it will give you a 3% discount, right? If you were paying a commission. That's it. Bottom line is, buyer is always paying. See, this is what we were talking about the documents, okay? Do you know what an NCNDA is? A commission agreement. A mandate. An exclusive mandate. A teaser. What's a teaser? Huh? A teaser is a brochure. <laughs> really? But we call them teasers. Okay? So, why is a teaser? Because it gives you some of the information about the properties, but without going too much in detail. Maybe it gives you a square footage, it gives you a price, and it gives you stuff like that, some pictures of the property, obviously without the logo, without the name of the property itself, you know. So that's a teaser. LOI, letter of intent. Okay. So letter of intent. To me, it's trash in LOI because it's non-binding. So LOI is just a piece of paper. But a lot of the sellers like it because it shows them who the buyer is, right? So uh, uh, that's why they like it, and it's a letter of intent, and with that, then you go the due diligence and so on and on, right? If, if we agree on the price and all the terms and everything. So, uh, but that normally we have also involved the, the, the attorneys of the parties. Asset delivered, the, I can't say that word, I'm sorry, guys. It's, it's very good, okay. What do I do? We do, we do a certification that those assets and signed by the, the, the owner, we do a, a certification that those assets are actually ready to be delivered. Okay? And this needs to be signed by the owner. Not by the, not by the attorneys or anything. This needs to be signed by the owners. Okay? We do a certification of delivery, the, the, uh, whatever. You know, you can read it. Okay? I can't say that word. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, you have never draft any of these yourself, right? These are attorneys? Well, once the attorney does one or two, you get, you get to know how it's done, right? It's, you, you already have templates for it. So at that point, yes. Um, and then you have many, many, many more uh, uh, type of uh, 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 documentation that you need and stuff like that. But Now, this is you. Which will be your next step? Go like this road nowhere or take a proper action and go to the next step? Right? So, as I told you before, there are different opportunities. Example, I look for property finders. In BT Global Group, I have property finders around the world. I have them in Spain, I have them in Vietnam, I have them in, uh, here in the States, I have them in different, different places. What do I do? I do a contract with them, they find a property that is suitable to be sold, I need to have contact directly with the seller, and they get a referral fee of 20% automatically. They have to do nothing else. Now, 20%, you we talked about numbers before, guys, right? Could be something interesting. But you have to do the work. <laughs> so, uh, 
normally as as a property finder you get 10 15 we get 20 because we want people to be happy and be repeated that they make a li good living too you know but i told you if you get one percent of uh, 800 million how much is that eh? yeah and you get 20 percent of that not bad no. what do you mean 800,000 it's 8 million it's 8 million not 800,000 one percent of 800 million ah, it's million. 8 million ah, okay 20% yeah, yeah. okay, of that how much is that 1.6 million you see even as a property finder you don't have to do much you can make yeah could be a good deal right and and so this is what we do i showed you also the different sites the different companies i have and uh, and how they work and what i do now it's up to you guys what you want to do uh, uh there are different opportunities also within my companies if you want okay we can talk to about them one-on-one -on -one if you want later on okay but you can go do your, what I want you to do here is do your own thing. Find your niche. I found free niche in international business. But there are plenty, plenty more. A lot more. And we're all different. So what, what I will do, it doesn't mean that it's something that you will do. Right? You can find something else or copy. I mean, how many new things do you think that we do in real estate that are really, really new that nobody else did before? No. Most of the stuff has already been done. And if it works, copy it. There's nothing wrong in copying. And if you want my help and explain you how I did this or I did that, I'm open to it. I have no problem. There's a lot of business for anybody there. Okay? And questions now. Let's do a little bit of uh, QA. Wow, I've been that good. Nobody has questions? Yes, ma'am. I'm so sorry. How long have you been doing this? In real estate? Uh, the, the international part? International part. Uh, it's five years. Five years. Okay. Yeah? But. The biggest one of the companies, I set it up in September. Yeah. But we already do a certain numbers already. Yes. So when you started, did you have any, was it intentional or you just kind of fell into it? Uh, that's something I explained at the beginning. I had one client. Uh, this client was asking for uh, uh, proper residential properties for Two properties for a total of 8.5 million, okay? And I started asking questions. And he was doing buying and selling hotels, and that's why uh, then, you know, asking the right questions to it. And at the beginning of the slides, in fact, I explained that everybody might have these kind of opportunities. Like one of our agents here, because somebody was looking to buy crypto, he sold 10 of uh, units that we have in Dominican Republic, you know? Uh, we have the commercial side, where you know where we do the hotels and we do all different type of assets so uh, i have a, a, an international mls as i said so all different types where we do residential so i have properties in mexico and so on and on you know um they they all free doing different things and that's that's what it is uh, but as i said there are other niches out there and uh, there are other ways of doing things Absolutely, mine is not the only way. And I think that that is what you have to look into and decide this is what I want to do. You can get that road. You see, it goes nowhere. It goes on a beach. That's it. Then you're stuck there, right? Or you can improve yourself and take the next step and do international. I mean, if Florida is too small for you, United States is too small for you, like it's for me, you know, then go international. I need the whole world. <laughs> I need the whole world, you know, really.
to be able to do what I want to do, what makes me happy. I enjoy what I do. And that's the key. Do something. I mean, if you decide to do it for the rest of your life, do something that you like. I really enjoy this. I like it. I like to be able to do certain discussion. We're talking about repar. We're talking about uh, 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 incomes, uh, uh, costs, uh, this. Uh, we're talking all different kind of professionals, from attorney to CPAs to, to other people that are in the industry and we understand the market. So it's important that you do something that you like, really. Because it is a lot of work. I repeat this. It doesn't come easy. Ask Marisa. She was sleeping at 4 o'clock this morning. I was already texting and sending messages. <laughs> she was still sleeping. But <laughs> uh, uh, you know, my first uh, uh, phone conversation I had 7 o'clock this morning. So it's, it's what it takes, obviously, because I, I'm working with different time zones, right? But I'll tell you one thing. At 9 o'clock at, at night, my phone shuts down automatically, OK? I know after 9 o'clock p.m., 9 p.m., I'm not answering phone calls. No way. And it doesn't wake up until a certain time that I already set up. Because if not, it could go, I, I have missed calls at 2 o'clock in the morning, 3 o'clock in the morning, like today, and, and I can't do that, right, obviously. So they leave a message, I call them back. It's fine. It's all right. You have to have your time, too. Sunday is my time. Sunday I don't work. No matter what. They can wait until the next day. Nothing happens. The world will not stop because you didn't answer the phone call. All right? You need your mental and your physical, uh, uh, um, how you say, um, time off, right, to relax. Because you can't keep up 24 hours a day, seven days a week, a certain rhythm. So you, you find your clients mostly through LinkedIn and Facebook groups? Facebook, no. Absolutely not. No Facebook. As I told you, Facebook for me is just I put pictures when I go to the beach with my wife. No, so That's my Facebook. You know? How do you verify like, the credentials and all that stuff? Like, how do you know that you I do. I there, is, there are ways. Yeah, like, there is a lot of public. Guys, like here in the States, even in other countries, there's public records. You can check things out. You have to do a little research. Or you can hire somebody, an attorney or something like that, to do the research and see the background. But remember one thing, if I'm dealing with buyers, as I told you, the first thing I want to know is about their uh, uh, profile, business profile, so I get an understanding also what they've been buying until then. What is their portfolio? All right? What is their capab capability? Let's say that somebody has been buying one, two, uh, you know, two three stars hotels uh, or, or motels, you know, around the United States, and now they ask me for a, 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 a Shangri-La in Paris that costs 1.6 billion. What do you think? What would be my answer? Funds. Eh? Without the funds. Exactly. Show me the funds, because if not, it's never going to happen. This is not your business model. So based on the business model of a client, I can understand already what he's doing, right? That's why I need his business profile. And I go and check it, too. I go and check it online. I go and check it in different ways. Absolutely. But it's part of the job. That's why I say you have to like it to do it. Any other questions? <laughs>